Hello everybody, this is Sean Lee Bradley, CEO of Dealer Synergy at Allen Vines Automotive, and we're going to do kind of a basic, quick, freestyle workshop right here on the fly, and I want to just kind of take you back to the, the fundamentals of the internet customer. I want you to understand them and what their expectations are. That's the most important thing. So the, the information I'm going to give you is going to be from my years doing this, about 14 years doing internet sales, plus the data that I've acquired from, you know, J.D. Power Internet Roundtable, a J.D. Power Associates Internet Sales Roundtable, the NADA, the National Automobile Dealer Associations, Auto Trader data, all this stuff, I'm just going to give it to you. All right, first and foremost, you need to understand the buying cycle of an internet prospect. There's a huge difference between an internet prospect and a showroom customer, obviously. You know, traditionally, showroom sales prospects would close approximately within 72 hours, like three days. That is completely different with an internet prospect. The average buying cycle, anybody know? Somebody that's new? 60. 45 to 90 days, it's okay. The average buying cycle is 45 to 90 days. Now, here's what the difference is. As per JD Power Roundtable data, here's what happens. Um, when somebody first decides, you know what, I think that I, I want a vehicle, I, I want a Ram 1500. By the way, I'm in a market for my company for uh, a pickup truck for one of my employees. And, um, you know, so the first thing is I'm not going to just go buy a truck, especially I'm not a truck person. I don't think I'm about trucks. You know, I'm, I'm a luxury type car guy. So, you know, what's my first step? Like the average American, as per J.D. Power, the first place they go to is the manufacturer's website. That starts about 90 days out. So when somebody makes the conscious decision in the United States right now, you know what, I think I want to buy a car, the first place that they're going to go to is, in your case, Chrysler, Hyundai, or Mitsubishi's main website. Why? Because they perceive that they're going to get the most accurate, up-to-date information from the manufacturer. They're going to get all the different styles, colors, codes, options, details, and sentence from the manufacturer. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, in my situation, I'm looking at a, at a Ram 1500. Quickly, ladies, what other competitors are there of a Ram 1500? Come on. Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. That's it. Chevy what? Chevy what? Uh, Silverado. 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 Okay, Ford what? F-150. Absolutely. So let's just use me as an example. Legitimately, I'm looking at a Ram 1500. So if I'm looking at a Ram 1500, I'm going to go through Chrysler's website, do some research, etc. But I also, if I'm a professional, I'm a business owner. You know what I mean? So I want to make the most educated decision. So I'm not going to just run out and get spotted. I'm going to look at the competing brands. Where am I going to go to? I'm going to go to Ford Manufacturer's website. I'm going to look into the F-150s, especially since I've heard being in the car business that the F-150 is the number one selling vehicle of all vehicles of all time. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to find out what the hype is. I'm going to go to the source of the hype. I'm going to go to Ford. And I'm also going to go to General Motors. I'm going to go to Chevy because I hear that General Motors is is like, you know, they're back better than before. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're coming strong. So I want to look at Chevy's website or GM's website for Silverado. I want to look at Ford for the F-150, and I want to look at Chrysler for a Ram 1500. Does that make sense? Yes. That starts, to do that research, that's going to start about 90 days out when I go to the manufacturer's website. But, okay, I've got all my data. Now what? How do I identify which is the absolute best vehicle? I can't go to Chrysler and go, psst, Chrysler, who's better? A Ram 1500 or Ford F 150? What do you think Chrysler's going to say, ladies? Come on. Ram 1500. Are you sure? Of course. I was in the reserves in RTC. You know, again, you ask me what's the best branch of the United States military. Well, United States Army. Why? Because that's what I did. You know? If you ask a Marine or a Navy soldier that, what are they going to say? Marine. Marine or the Navy. So, again, how could the average American understand which is the best vehicle? So first stage, let's go back. Stage one is doing the OEM, or the, which stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. It's going to the manufacturer sites and getting all the basic data, the information. Now stage two is about 45 to 55 days out. Stage one is 90 days out, right? Stage two approximately is between 45 and 55 days out. Now I'm going to go to websites like Edmunds.com, E-D-M-U-N-D-S.com, KellyBlueBook.com. You know, blackbook.com. I'm going to go to Auto by Tell, Cars Direct, Delix. I'm going to go through Auto USA. I'm going to go to Autotropolis. I'm going to go through cars.com. I'm going to go through Auto Trader. I'm going to go to JD Power. I'm going to go to, uh, you know, Car and Driver, Motor Trend. I'm going to go through all these information websites and I'm going to narrow down my search. I'm going to narrow down my search. I'm going to filter through 
and figure out which is better for you know uh, speed, you know performance, fuel economy, whatever. Does that make sense? Now, when I am 30 days or less from buying a vehicle, buying an automobile, buying a vehicle, when I'm the closest in my buying cycle. When I'm looking for a specific vehicle, after I narrowed it down and I've narrowed it down to a Ram 1500, or I'm pretty close set on Ram 1500, now I'm looking for pricing, availability, and where I'm going to buy my vehicle. Now, as per J.D. Power, it's called a geo target. When I'm 30 days or less, that's when people go into Google and they type in Ram 1500 Jackson, Tennessee. Ram 1500 or Ram or you know truck or Chrysler truck, Ram truck, you know Memphis. Um, you know, uh, Nashville, you know, Tennessee, TN, etc. That's when I start going there. Does that make sense? So to recap, there's three main buying cycles or stages for an internet prospect in 2012. First stage starts at the manufacturer's websites, websites, because it's not just one manufacturer, and I'm looking at the overall information. Stage two is where I'm trying to get third-party validation, not just expert third party like JD Power Car and Driver, but customer reviews, customer testimonials. Does that make sense? Now, when I am 30 days or less, when I'm the hottest prospect you know, in the market, when I'm looking for a place to buy my automobile, I'm going to start doing local search. I'm going to basically you know, type in names of dealerships. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to geo-target my search to narrow down my search. Does that make sense? OK. So it is very important that you understand, as per JD Power, the Average internet prospect spends 11 hours online, between 9 and 11 hours online doing research. Ladies, it takes you 30 seconds to get an invoice, you know, from the internet, right or wrong. So what are people doing for 10 hours, 59 and a half minutes? They're looking at other things. They're looking at your reputation. They're looking at your reviews. They're looking at your stars, you know, on, on Google Places, Google Plus, a merchant circle. They're looking at it, it, it to see what your integrity is, how you treat people before, during, and after they buy an automobile, right? You've got to remember that there's so much information out there. You need to be as educated as your prospects are. You need to know your competitors. Now, I want you to pay in the room here, okay? All right? How many people here, show of hands, honestly, um, have gone to all the other Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, uh, Hyundai and Mitsubishi dealerships in this area, in Memphis and in Nashville and in Jackson. Basically been there. No, no, gone to their websites, each one of them. One? Have you done it yet? Have you done that? I have not. Okay, it's okay. Uh, I have ladies over here on this side. Mm -hmm. No. Have you? Well, think not about it. Okay, well, that's what you guys can do. Think. think about this. You know, it. Your competitors are doing it. As per Jade Power, like you said before, the average internet prospect is searching five to eight other dealerships' websites. You all need to know what the other people are saying. Why should they buy a car from there? If you think about it, you could mystery shop them, not from the dealership's phone number, I mean from your cell phone number, or from a Google voice number, because they're free. You get like a masked phone number, you know? What I want you to be able to do, can you shut that off for me? What I want you to be able to do is understand, very, very importantly, understand that field intelligence is the most important thing that you could possibly do, okay? Okay, so again, it is very, very important that you gather field intelligence. You need to identify who your competitors are. You need to identify what they're, you know, um, what they're saying, what they're offering to people, why they should buy a vehicle. Does that make sense? They could even maybe do like a spreadsheet on comparatives. Right. Yeah, think about it. If you create Tyler, something that for you as the internet director, you should get a spreadsheet together, and on the spreadsheet should be a list of all your competitors, just the names of all of them, you know, and then the different models, and then what they offer. You know, think about how strong that is, what they offer. How many people have, you know, uh, non-commissioned salespeople? How many people offer, you know, insurance or price protection guarantee, offer free delivery or home or office? Because the more that you know that, the more confidence that you could have. Has this ever happened to you? And I want you to pan the room uh, and, and look at every one of the coordinators here. Has this ever happened? Have you ever had somebody say, well, I don't want to come out of the, to you. You're, you're too far away. Anybody said that before? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. 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 Okay, you know what you can turn around and say? If you knew the field of if you knew, let's say somebody's from Memphis, right? And they're looking for uh, an Avenger, right? And they're like, I, I don't want to come in. You guys are in Jackson. I got a, a Memphis dealer. If you don't know what that Memphis dealer's Google ratings are, their reviews are, 
then you don't have something strong to say. Can you imagine if you could go to Google and see that the local dealership only had two stars or one and a half stars, or they had like negative reviews on ripoffreport.com? You know what I would say? I'd say Tyler's my prospect for Memphis. I say Tyler, listen, I totally appreciate that you don't want to you know, come from Memphis to here. The great news is this, that we offer free delivery at home or office. Kind of like Domino's Pizza, but if we don't get there in 30 minutes or less, I can't give you the car away for free, can I? <laughs> But besides that, Tyler, check this out. You know, um, I don't know if you know this, but don't take my word for it. Google's Google, right? Just go to Google right now. Just type in Avenger or Chrysler or Dodge, you know, in Memphis and see what comes up. <gasps> Well, darn it, look at that. They only have one and a half stars. You seem like a nice guy, Tyler. You wouldn't eat at a one and a half star restaurant, would you? Not unless you had to. How about this? How about coming to us with a five star experience? Don't take my word for it. Look at it. Look at Google. Google says so. Ladies, is that not powerful to be able to say? But you can't use those responses. You can't use that information unless you have that education and you have that field intelligence. If you don't know what your competitors are doing, good, bad, you know, pretty ugly, you can't use that information to build a compelling sales story on why they should do business with you, right or wrong. Right. And they might be doing something cool that yes. you like too, that you can do yes. here as well, or better, do it better. To prepare a sales story. <laughs> right. I think Jay-Z said it in one of his songs, even a broken clock is right twice a day. I know he stole it from somewhere else, but <laughs> I mean, that, the thing about it, if you've got like an, a, a dial, you know, not a digital watch, but a regular watch, even if it's broken and doesn't move, it's right twice a day. You can gather great things to, you know, from your competitors, even what they're doing wrong, so you can stay away from those wrong habits. Right. Yes? Right. So I want you to take this, and the, the more information that you enrich yourself with, the more powerful you're going to be. Time check? 11.46. Okay. So to wrap this up, how can you do this? By mystery shopping. By creating, you could create a fake Gmail account. Right? You can turn around and just you know make up a name. You can get you can get a fake you know Google Voice phone number that could you know it's like a forward. It's not your real number. It's a number that that kind of forwards to your real number for your security protection. And you could mystery shop people. You can mystery shop dealers that are local. You can mystery shop you know your competitors. You can mystery shop the best dealerships. Google the best Hyundai dealerships, best Chrysler dealerships. Ask Dorian. Ask Tyler. Do some research. You know, you mystery shop a bunch of people. See what email templates come back. You know, and if you've got time, spend a couple minutes and just keeping them in their game. Throw some of your objections that you get at them through email, through voicemail, right? And see how they respond. Is that not a crazy idea? Think about how much you could learn and you could get. I mean, it's not about reinventing the wheel, it's about perfecting the process. You know, don't try to just invent new stuff. Just, just you have a bigger world than just Jackson, Tennessee out there. There's 20,000 car dealerships. There's hundreds of thousands of Americans right now engaging in your exact practice, internet sales. Learn from them what's good, bad, etc. So to recap before we close this out, three buying cycles. First is the OEM, 90 days out. Second is the comparison from third-party providers, uh, which is about 45, 50 days out. And then 30 days or less is, the, is when somebody's ready to make a move. As I mentioned before, the average internet prospect is spending approximately nine to 11 hours online doing research. They're searching five to eight dealerships besides yourself, not just your make, but competing makes. So here's the takeaway, power takeaway. You need to be compelling. You need to be artistic. You need to be you know, amazing at articulating what is different and better about you than anybody else. Because you've got so much distracting sensory overload of information there's five to eight other dealerships emailing, phone calling, voicemail messaging, you know, getting in-store visits. How can you segregate yourself from the noise? That's your mission. When you get off the phones, you need to be able to feel content, like, wow, you know, I let them know why they do business with us. Not that, you know, you're phone friends and, you know, that, you know, uh, you, you do local stuff or whatever. They know why they should buy from you, why they should come in and do business with you than anybody else. Make sense? Stop.